Hello everyone, I'm Renown Zero, and today we're going to be talking about Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Black Adam production budget reportedly ballooned to $260 million after costly reshoots. So we're going to jump right into this article from Bounding Into Comics. Here, a new report claims that Dwayne The Rock Johnson and DC Films production for Black Adam ballooned to $260 million after a round of costly reshoots. This new report comes from The Hollywood Reporter shortly after Johnson announced that Black Adam is not part of James Gunn and Peter Safran's upcoming slave for the DCU. This was a rumor and was recently confirmed to be true. Johnson shared the news to his social media writing on Twitter, quote, James Gunn and I connected and Black Adam will not be in their first chapter of storytelling. However, DC and Seven Bucks have agreed to continue exploring the most valuable ways Black Adam can be utilized in future DC multiverse chapters. He added, James and I have known each other for years and have always rooted for each other to succeed. It's no different now and I will always root for DC and Marvel to win and win big. Johnson then added, these decisions made by... James and DC leadership represent their vision of DCU through their creative lens. After 15 years of relentless hard work to finally make Black Adam, I'm finally I'm very proud of the film we deliver for fans worldwide. I will always look back on the fan reaction to Black Adam with tremendous gratitude, humility, and love. We got the tweet pulled up here. Johnson appeared to try and put a positive spin on Black Adam's poor box office showing after the film only brought in $390.9 million worldwide and $167.8 million at the domestic box office, which I... Honestly, I enjoyed the film. I really did. I hated the fact that they race swapped Cyclone and Hawkman, but I, you know, I saw it with family, so I went to go see it. We just watched a film with them. They don't really care about this stuff. Given the film reportedly had a two hundred million dollar production budget at the time, it would have needed to earn at least five hundred million to break even. However, Johnson claimed the film made somewhere between fifty two million and seventy two million in profit. He wrote on Twitter, waited to confirm with financiers before I shared this excellent Black Adam news. Our film will profit between fifty two and seventy two million fact. At almost four hundred million worldwide, we are building our new franchise step by step. First Captain America did three hundred seventy million for the DC future, he added, and we have the tweet pulled up right here. <laughs> Clearly, that future is now dead as Black Adam is not in Gun and Saffron's plans for the DCU. However, this new report from T from the Hollywood Reporters Aaron Couch and Boris Kit also claims the production is much higher than early estimates of 200 million. Couch and Kit claim greenlit at 190 million, the movie cost balloon to 260 million mark, according to sources, especially after a costly 20-day round of reshoots undertaken after a poor test screening that does not include marketing costs. If that number is accurate, the film needed to make around $650 million just to pre even. Obviously, it's nowhere near hitting that mark. The high-priced production budget and the poor return likely did not do Johnson any favors in swaying Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav to his side. Zaslav has made it crystal clear he only wants winners, and he's willing to cut the fat when it comes to bloated projects. On an earnings call back in November, Dazlov revealed he wanted to find $3.5 billion in savings and he's willing to cut projects like Batgirl to do it. It was going to be garbage anyway, dead on arrival. In fact, he defended his decision to cut films and shows like Batgirl, saying, We did not get rid of any show that was helping us. He added, This is more than just a dollar tally of what we've saved on the expense line, on an expense line. It is more than just a number. We are fund fundamentally rethinking and reimagining how this organization is structured, and we are empowering. Our business unit leadership to transform their organizations with an owner's mindset and view on quality and accountability. Good for you. Not only has he reformed the entire company, but he also made clear he wants to make the company to focus on the big names when it comes to DC properties. You look at Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. These are brands that are known everywhere in the world. The ability to drive those all over the world with great stories is a big opportunity for us. Zaslav said in August, we have done a reset. We restructured the business where we are going to focus where there is going to be a team with a 10-year plan focusing just on D.C. We believe we can build a much more sustainable business. Sounds good to me, because Man of Steel was trash, BVS was trash, Justice League was trash. He added, it's, Shazam was really good. He added, it's very similar to the structure that Alan Horn and Bob Iger put together very efficiently with Kevin Feige at Disney. No, it isn't. We think that we could bring, build a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of D.C., and as part of that, we're going to focus on quality. We're not going to release any film before it's ready. We're not going to release a film to make a quarter. We're not going to release a film under the focus. It is going to be how we do. We make each of these films in general as good as possible. So, <clears throat> a complete reset is fine. I still think the decision to get rid of Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck as, you know, respectively as Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman, is a horrible decision. I think the Shazam film was very good. 
Zachary Levi plays and plays plays Shazam very very well, and I think the the kid that plays Billy did a very good job as well as everyone else. I just think they should have stuck stuck with keeping the actors that people like. Get rid of Ezra Miller. Get rid of crybaby bitch Ray Fisher. You know, keep Jason Momoa and find two people to replace those guys because holy crap, they're terrible <laughs> and. I think this would have been a much more successful plan going forward with those people, with those actors, and two replacements for both Ezra Miller and Ray Fisher, as you know, The Flash and Cyborg, respectively. But overall, I think it's actually good to reset because all of Zack Snyder's movies were dog shit. They're not masterpieces, they're not even above average, they're like below average dog shit films. Man of Steel was ass, BVS was ass, Justice League was ass. I didn't watch the Zack Snyder. You know, just that Justice League cut, but I don't really care because the original was just so ass. But just, uh, I think that's all I got for today with this video. Thank you all for checking it out. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you did like the video. Comment below what you think about all this. Subscribe for more content. And as always, I will see you all on the next one. Peace.